we all, I think, would agree that the US dollar got incredibly overvalued during this, this run up that we've seen, you know, particularly since the, the, since the pandemic. Um, and then it's a question of what we do think that we're in the process of correcting from an overvalued state to something that is more fundamentally justified, then you'd have to look at well, which currency pairs look to be the most undervalued. Um, and you'd probably pick the Japanese yen and you'd actually pick sterling as well. So, you know, I heard you saying that, that maybe people are thinking that, that sterling's moving into overvalued territory. But if you looked at it on a sort of a longer term, you know, purchasing power parity uh, argument or similar kind of real exchange rate arguments, Sterling and the yen are kind of the standout weak currencies here. So on that basis, if the US dollar is going to continue to head south, um, then they'd probably be the two in terms of G10 that, that arguably have the most upside potential here. All right. The reason I came in on that is because, uh, you know, uh, uh, my observation was purely uh, as an outsider, having spoken to a lot of Forex analysts who said that since the pension crisis in September, uh, there'd been a marked recovery, uh, first led by short covering and then some long bias for, for the sterling. And reflecting the underlying fundamentals, it didn't quite uh, justify the level. So, so what's the upside from here? Taking your point on board, what's the upside from here for, for, uh, the, uh, for the pound sterling? Well, certainly on, on a relative basis, so I'm saying, yes, that does on a valuation basis, you could argue that there's upside. You know, I, I would agree that there's probably a lot of we've had a succession of sort of less negative stroke positive news going back to the Northern Ireland protocol to, you know, they're going back to the budget, which has obviously backloaded a lot of the fiscal tightening that, that seemed to be there. We've had more relief on, on energy prices and market pricing, suggesting that we're going to see, uh, you know, an extended period and potentially lower energy bills. That's all sort of feeding into a less pessimistic view of growth here. Um, whether or not, the, you know, if the Bank of England is potentially done with its last rate rise, um, you know, they do pass at upcoming meetings. I think that would introduce some, uh, some downside risk, certainly. So I'd, I'd agree, we've come quite a long way. We've come from a 119 to, to 125 in pretty short order. So, you know, some consolidation, I think, is likely. But just on a, on a you know, really talking about a medium term view about, you know, where you think sterling could get to in two or three years time and the Japanese yen, if we are going to see a full correction of, uh, of undervalued levels.